Welcome back everyone. Today I am going to be exploring the traditions and rituals of the classic night out. Now myself and a group of young documentary makers, <coughs> i.e. my friends, decided to explore the streets of England and relive and experience a classic British night out for your entertainment. I'm going to be discussing the steps of a classic night out, what they're about and why they're important. Pre-drinks. Pre-drinks, I think, is probably one of the most important stages of the night out. It's where you all get together around someone's house. Normally the same person hosts pre-drinks, usually it's me, and it's where you bring a bottle of wine, bring a bottle of beer, you bring your makeup and your outfit and you all get together. Sometimes you put on a pizza or some nibbles or you get chips and dips and basically the idea of pre-drinks is for you to all just kind of catch up, get ready together, get some booze into you so you save money in the long run and also just get you pumped for the night out. Pre-drinks is also an opportunity to share outfit ideas. Sometimes you can bring a few different options and get your friends to help you decide on what to wear. It's also normally where mini meltdowns happen where people can't decide what they want to wear and and usually throw a tantrum, but also it's good for just sitting in front of a big mirror, standing in front of a big mirror with your glass of wine or your beer in hand with the tunes banging and you generally just kind of get a little bit pumped before you go out. I also like to use this opportunity to catch up, kind of get a vibe of where we want to go, who we want to see, who we want to avoid in town, just get a little bit tipsy. During pre-drinks though, someone needs to take the responsibility, usually me as well, of booking a taxi. You all agree on a taxi time, right? But I think the trick is, is to agree but secretly book it for 15 minutes after you all agree on a time because it's always going to be someone that's not ready that's flapping so you don't want to get it wrong sometimes the taxi ride can be split between the group if you've all got change or one person can pay for the taxi and then people can pay them back via drinks later on in the evening you take your taxi ride and you go on to the next step which is a shitty bar that does cheap drinks this next step is to basically get a little bit more tanked up a place that does drink offers is always a winner or just generally cheap drinks. Having somewhere that plays good tunes is also great to kind of get you pumped up and ready. It's also a good opportunity to eye out who else is out that night and to see if you know anybody else or again if you want to hide and avoid anybody. I have a few favourite spots in my city of Norwich which I like to go to for pre drinks which is the Mischief. That's always a good shout. There's always the classic weather spoon which I think is a national favourite anyway. Also finding anywhere that has a good happy hour is always a good shout. Ooh. Next up walk or get a cab to the club. Now, we normally walk. If we're coming from the mischief, which we did, we will walk the 10, 15 minute walk. We say 10, 15 minutes, but if there's a group of you, people are bound to bump into friends and then you always have to stop and wait for someone to finish their conversation before you can head on off. It's also the time where you get people coming out of clubs trying to sell you like free shots or free entry, which you have to avoid. You just, you just gotta keep going. Also at this point, if you're walking, that's when you need a wee kicks in and then the pace gets picked up because you're like, right guys, we need to hurry up because I really need to pee pee. You head on down. Then, once you're in the club, first things first, you either go for a pee first or you head straight for the bar. Now, this is what we did. We go upstairs, we go to the nicer bar where it's a bit quieter and we sit down and we have a few drinks. If there's a drink offer on, then amazing. We sit down, we have a few drinks and then uh, kind of get ready and warmed up to go dance. Now, this is the point most likely where you're starting to feel a little bit drunk. From this on, you're kind of in autopilot slash you just got to improvise. There's going to be times where you'll probably lose your friends and then miraculously find them somewhere around them or in the toilet. Luckily, as I've got older, I found it easier to stay together. I remember once when I was younger, it, it was like as soon as you get into the club, that's it. You've all separated. You've all gone. Game over. See you tomorrow kind of thing. This is the time to get out your dance moves, make new friends, maybe pull. Who knows? Also, a big part of a night out is making friends in the toilet. One of my favourite things to do is to go to the loo and then spend ages washing my hands, touching up my makeup and then chatting to everybody that comes in. There's also times where I've blended out eyelash glue, a little hairbrush, checked if someone looks okay. And also, because I'm a bit older now and the clubs that I go to, I also used to go to when I was younger, if anyone comes in the toilet not feeling well and they're being sick or they're just like not having a great time, that's also an opportunity for myself to take over a mother role and make sure that they're okay. I also personally always meet a subscriber in the toilet. <laughs> Once you're finished at the club and you're having a great time and you just dance, you finish dancing or the lights come up and you go, oh my God, it's the end of the night. That is the time to decide, do you want to go to another dingy bar, which is just a bit seedy, which closes at like 6am or shall we go and get 
pizza. Now, on this particular night, we did continue on to another bar because we weren't ready to stop dancing. So we did, and by this point, I was kind of obliterated. If you don't wanna keep drinking, it's probably a great time to get onto the water. Then, my favorite part of the night is cheesy chips and kebab time. So find yourself the nearest kebab shop that is reasonable. It's normally by this point, everybody is out queued up trying to do the same thing. And then you can either eat it on the street or package it up and get in a taxi and wait till you get home. I normally can't wait, so I'm already getting it in there. This is also gonna help you feel a little bit better in the morning, I think. It's just one of those things. You always have to end the night on some real dirty food. And then obviously, you grab a cab and you go home. Go to bed with a glass of water and a paracetamol and good luck for you the next day. Boom. Just remember though, drink responsibly, know your limits, make sure you're with people that make you feel safe and will look after you if anything goes wrong. You know, don't do anything stupid. I feel like I have to say this because like, you know, this is, <sighs> I'm responsible. Write down in the comments your favorite thing to do on a night out and your favorite beverage and your favorite thing to get at the end of a night out. Cheers, everybody. This is tea. I'm filming this at 9 a.m. <laughs> Bye. This is the death of Helen's YouTube channel right now. Like, it's just, it ends. It ends here. I've watched too many. This is just a snapshot of the death of the channel.